why don't we have six airplanes taking off? First day they were out here, we hit 112 degrees. Roger, why don't you go ahead and uh, just head to the south side of the valley, go down to the eastern side. I don't know how many of you have seen IMAX, probably most of you by now. We have a little bit more light today, so we may get a little faster. It's fantastic. When they came over one camera, they dropped, bang, down to the frame of the other camera. Two really nice shots. The real window of opportunity only lasts for about five minutes. He's gonna throw us off the base after this one. Yeah, right. Now we're cooking. Okay. Yeah, we got some good stuff. Oh, good, good, good. <laughs> I think we got enough. This exercise has been uh, both a wonderful opportunity because there's so many aircraft and people and equipment here, uh, but it's also an exercise of frustration because we have to work in the cracks, we have to work in and around exercises. People are incredibly busy. Our mission throughout this whole thing was not to make a movie, but it was uh, to provide the assets to help support creating that movie. So it takes a little legwork and coordination and. Uh, fortunately, Nellis had a superior attitude going into this and they want to support 100%. It was pretty amazing the amount of, of cooperation we got and again, it did feel like we, come, we had integrated ourselves with them. They began to accept us after a while. We have some very experienced and talented people and um, that we all have different ideas about how things should be done and when we get together and uh, work as, as a team it's a real sort of uh, synergy. I think the biggest challenge of any film is to find a really compelling character, central character around which you can build the whole film and we were quite a ways into this before we found John. This has also been just a, a great time out here. Uh, it's really nerve-wracking being in front of the camera, being close up. It's, it's really neat, uh, but I don't think I'm going to quit my day job to try and be an actor. In this film, it was really important that he had all of the credentials. In other words, he had to have done the red flag. And he had to have been in real combat, because in the end, the film is all about how a red flag affects a pilot's performance in war. My grandfather was a Corsair pilot in World War II. He was very decorated, got three distinguished flying crosses, 12 air medals, and had one uh, Japanese fighter kill. I think this whole process of going through the filming is going to bring me a lot closer to him. Yeah, it's, it's an incredible array of, uh, of aircraft and equipment. I think that to get all that working together is a huge undertaking. The first time you get out there, there's so many aircraft out there that it's a little bit overwhelming. There might be 75 aircraft in your strike package from F-15Es, F-16s, A-10s, C-130s, uh, all kinds of different aircraft. So these guys are flying overhead and I can give very basic instructions and I got to think in a, a three-dimensionally how do I de-conflict everybody so they're not going to run into each other or the ground or they don't blow up the two million dollars worth of IMAX equipment. One day we filmed uh, A-10s formating on the back of a tanker and this incredible drama was taking place outside the window and the plane was bouncing all over. It was terrifying, actually, and, and it took 40 minutes to fuel one of these planes. And he was just about out of fuel, and in the last second they got it, boom, they held on. But that was, that was plenty exciting. Well, the other night we were filming a bomb building. They had 200 bombs to build, um, so they paid attention for a while, and then they got to work. And so with our big crane, we were able to really um, look over people's shoulders, um, and get terrific real shots that weren't staged in, in any way. The, the nature of explosives, uh, you know, there's things that you want to ensure, safety and security, and uh, this takes a lot of coordinated effort. Uh, we want to make sure that, uh, that our pilots are ready to take on any task that uh, where the Air Force is called upon. In the actual bombing sequence, uh, where we use live ordnance, uh, cameras were 
tricky because any kind of live ordinance is dangerous to use. In fact, there was a shot that we did. We put the IMAX camera behind a bunker with heavy um, plexiglass and plywood uh, and, and then surrounded that with concrete. Let's go easy on the bombs down by the back side of the convoy. Unfortunately, when the lot, when the actual bombs went off, uh, we got shrapnel on both sides of the of the uh, camera, and uh, just went right through the, pl the plywood and plexiglass, and even some of the concrete. Copy. We're currently holding top 14 over the target. The range is calling you to 60 seconds out. Yeah, we're still holding the Tomorrow we'll be filming the rescue scenario. My job here on the ground is to just make sure everything is coordinated properly. What we have is six helicopters going to be picking up our downed pilot, the 15 pilot. Well, it's tricky anytime you got incredibly loud noises. I had to yell at people for a while, and that's, that's hard. But we got it in the end. We got two helicopters in the air, and we'll be filming the jump sequence. He's going to jump out of the uh, helicopter and land here over to the DZ that we've got already set up. Uh, the guys who jumped today are our pararescue men from the 58th Rescue Squadron. We can jump as low as 800 feet from a fixed wing aircraft, and with the halo, we can jump as high as 35,000 feet on oxygen. I think this will work. I, what I want is, is we're going to be we're going to zoom up high. I want to see what the pilots would see, which is a big cloud. I mean, that, that's spectacular. I hope it never happens, but if I do have to have that happen, I'm glad these guys are the ones that are coming to get me, so it's, it's pretty awesome. The IMAX camera is, uh, it's a beast. Some people have called them the pit bulls of cinematography because it's really difficult to put it on your shoulder and pick it up like a video camera and then go and do documentary cinematography. And that's what's difficult is to try and create this environment that feels like you're just a rolling camera, but you're really operating it on a 2,000 pound crane. If you nick the film at all, if you damage it in, uh, in trying to put it into, into the movement, there are several rollers that it has to go through and registration pins that have to grab the film. And really, you just have to be sensitive about not damaging it. Because then if you try running it through the camera, it'll break film. The IMAX frame's about uh, the size of a credit card. So it's like running 24 credit card size images per second through the camera. And the, you know, the film is uh, traveling at such a high rate of speed, you know, at $1,000 a minute, basically. So. You have to know what you're shooting or what you want to shoot before you do it, and you have to ensure that you're going to get it when you uh, when you push the button. Well, I have uh, 37 years uh, actively doing aerial photography, more than 3,000 flights. I did all the aerials on the movie uh, Top Gun, The Great Santini, Flight of the Intruder, and several others. And I've never seen the array of airplanes that we had on fighter pilot. Well, shooting IMAX has certain challenges. We can really only carry the IMAX in the nose. It's a fixed camera position. I have to move the airplane. The cameraman in the back shooting IMAX on the nose, all they can do is turn the switch on and off. In addition to the Learjet, they used the B-25 one day. It can do uh, some things that we, we can't do with the Lear. A cameraman can get in the tail gunner position and the airplanes can maneuver behind the B-25. They can get up close and they can track whoever they want and they can move from one airplane to another. Uh, when you're doing a, a uh, movie like this, safety is the primary. The briefings are very important. I, I can't stress how important it is for everybody to have a clear understanding before they take off as to uh, what you're gonna do. We're gonna do the straight on because the light's a lot better now. And then we'll do that after. It's just a spectacular opportunity to work with the, you know, the world's greatest Air Force. And to have this kind of cooperation is really fun. I mean, it's, it doesn't get any more exciting than this.